Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to answer some viewers' questions about nerd mats specific to double kettlebell clean and press and double front squat. I got a message from a gentleman named Zach, and he wanted to know how we would apply the nerd math to double kettlebell clean and press or push press and front squat. This is a really good question. And this one's been rolling around in my head for a long time. I first thought about this 10, 15 years ago because this has a couple of very interesting problems in it that very much highlight the difference between kettlebell training and something like barbell training. We all know volume cycles are the key to this, but let's make a couple of videos discussing the thought process behind it, and then how we are going to apply the ideas. Kettlebells are different from barbells in a fundamental way. Barbells you can microload, which means you can add quarter pound plates, half pound plates. When you figure out your one rep max with a barbell, which you probably shouldn't do until you're already pretty good with technique so you don't kill yourself, then you can determine your percentages. And different barbell programs from different coaches have different percentages in how they move up and down. People are always playing with the math of barbell, but that's because you can very, very specifically load it and you can make five sets of five. And you could have your five sets of five be at say 60%, Exactly, if you had a 300 pound deadlift, then you could take 60% of that. And let's just use 300 pounds because it's easy. We'll take 60% of 100 is 60 times three is 180. And you could do your workouts at that exact level. Or you could do 80% for say five sets of three and you could do them at 240. The math is pretty simple. But your, as your one rep max changes and it gets away from those very simple numbers of 300 and it gets to, 345 or 343, you can still divide and get your exact 60%, your exact 80%, your exact 75%. The problem with thinking about kettlebells is you cannot do that. You cannot exactly microload the kettlebells for now. We will talk about a couple of things you can do in a future video. The way that it differs is you have exact fixed weights. 24K is 24K kettlebell. They're stuck there. You have to figure out how to program around not being able to microload. The questions we need to ask first are, how many kettlebells do you have? You obviously need pairs of kettlebells. If you have asymmetrical pairs, this problem gets infinitely more complicated. And now you have to know, do you have just classic 216s, 224s, 232s, like the classic RKC jumps? Or do you have smaller jumps? Competition kettlebells now come in 2K jumps, but you have to have a lot of kettlebells in order to make this work. So let's try to make a different video about each one of these things, the big jumps and the little jumps because they're each their own problem. Another thing we wanna know is which techniques are you going to be using? For our double kettlebell clean and press or push press, then you have to figure out, are you doing swing cleans in between each rep? Are you doing dead cleans in between each rep where you would put the kettlebell all the way down and have it stop moving? Or my recommended method, the start stop clean and press, because you're gonna get the best of all of the things. You're gonna get a low stop position. You will stop each time, you will accelerate the weight. You will get your swing load. You will get it all the way up. And then the difference between our press and our push press. If you can do the press, do the press. As the sets go on, then you would be pushing into the push press category where you are using your legs as a single jump to help you get the weights up. Make the weights light at the bottom so you can get through the sticking point of the press so you can get to lockout. Are you going to stick with press or are you gonna allow yourself to deviate into push press? Let's just kind of assume that they're the same for now. We are gonna press as much as we can and we are gonna only push press right at the end as we're getting very tired in order to get to lockout. So this is our basic layout. Things that we are most concerned with, we cannot microload, so we have to design around not being able to do that like you could with barbells. The way that we're gonna do that is probably going to be volume cycles. We're not gonna put density cycles in here right now because that just takes it another level of complexity up. Let's talk about volume cycles. And let's start with 2K jumps, we have the jumps we need instead of 8K jumps, because 8K jumps are extremely hard to program around. So let's start with the easiest possible idea and go towards the harder ideas. 
we have erased our board and we have redone our board with what will fit on the board. The actual programming idea would be much bigger than this and we would need about seven boards to write this all down. But I think that we can illustrate this fairly well with the space that we have. Let's talk about 2K jumps in kettlebells. We want to get good at our double clean and press and our double front squat. So what we are going to do is do rolling volume cycles. We're taking the idea of volume cycles and we are continuing with it. We are sticking with sets of five, four now. This gets a lot more complicated if you are not sticking to sets of five. If you are also doing sets of three or sets of four, you have to determine what you're gonna do based on the weights that you have available. If you have more weights available to you, 2K jumps or even 4K jumps, then you can probably stick with sets of five. If 4K jumps, you might need to throw in some days where you have sets of three. If you have the big jumps, the RKC jumps, like 16 to 24 to 32K, then you're gonna have to have your sets of three, your sets of four, and your sets of five. And you might even need sets of two if, if you have to. It all depends on the coach picking what you have to do at that point. So let's talk about this. We are gonna limit ourselves to three to 10 sets. On the board, we have five to 10 sets. This is where we start to get mathy. This is not hard math. This is simple math that we just looks hard to most people. So what we have here is we've written down what the workout is. 16K times two kettlebells, so two times 16, five sets of five reps. So think about that, that's 32 times five, if you want to do that in your head, assume that that's 30 times 5 would be 150. 2 times 5 is 10. Add those together, it would be 160. If we have 160 times 5, we get 800. It's not hard math. It's math you can do in your head. But we know our change is 160. 32 times 5 is 160, so we've written down change. A little triangle, by the way, means change or it does the way that I write math. We have our total work capacity for that day. That's 800, that's 960, that's 1120, 1280, 1440, 1600. We know that we did the math right because double the number of sets is double the work. 800 to 1600. 800 times two is 1600. So that's just a quick way to check to make sure you didn't mess anything up along the way. We're writing things in different colors so that they stand out because that's the way I have to write things down with as many colors of pen as possible so I can track the changes. We have tracked the changes, five sets, six sets, seven sets, eight sets, nine sets, 10 sets. This is constant. The number of reps in each set is constant. So I'm just leaving it the color of black, but we're still writing our 216 out here every time, just so we know. But I did highlight the change on the board so that I make sure I'm right. When you do a lot of this, it's easy to mess one thing up and you can throw off the whole system. Then we did the math for 218. Two times 18 is 36 times five is 180. 180 times five is 900. And then the change is 180 each time we add a set. So when we go to six sets, it's 10, 80, seven sets, 12, 60, 14, 40, 16, 20, 1800. Once again, I check 900. I doubled the sets from five to 10. So this should be double 900 to 1800. I'm pretty sure I did that generally correct. And then let's talk about our two 20K kettlebells, which add up to 40K. Four times five is 20, add a zero is 200, times five is 1,000. Not super hard math. And then we know our change is 200 each time, 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, 1,800, 2,000. We would determine where on this we start by testing. This does not work for everybody because most people simply aren't strong enough to survive the test. If people are new to training, then they won't survive the test. If you're used to training, then you will survive the test. So the test, you would test each exercise and then you would figure out where you started. So let's think about a couple of things when we think about that. So we test our start, stop, clean and press because I'm advocating for the start, stop because I like it more than just the swing, clean and press for this in this instance, you would like to determine where you start on this graph by doing your max test. Max tests are hard because they are hard on people. Getting to failure is where people get hurt. 
And failure with kettlebells is a little bit different than failure with barbell. Barbell, when you fail, you can push it away if you have Olympic plates and you can run away from the bell and it'll bounce. It's very hard to drop kettlebells if you fail because, because they're not symmetrical objects that are meant to bounce. They bounce in unpredictable directions and they tend to take out ankles. So we highly recommend you don't do that. It's a lot harder to find your max doing that test with kettlebells. But let's just assume we're gonna start somewhere on this graph. I do it generally by feel. I'll have somebody do it and I look and I watch to where they start to look like they're about to fall apart, but I don't let them fall apart because that's bad and that's where people get hurt. So let's just say we're starting at the top of this graph. Oftentimes with kettlebells, you will pick a spot that is down from where your math says you're going to be because the technique of kettlebells is harder. And you would give yourself an extra two weeks of build into the progression so that people don't get hurt. But think about this, let's look at our work capacity. We have 800, 900, 1000, 960, 1080. So let's just go through and order these. We would say that's workout number one, 800. Workout number two, 900. Workout number three, 960. Workout number four, 1000. Workout number five, 1080. Now I have my choice, 1120, six, 1200, seven, beyond 1200, 1260, eight, 1280, nine, 1400, 10, 1440 and 1440, 11, 12, 1600, 13, 1600, 14, 1620, 15, 18, workout number 16, workout number 17, workout number 20. One, two, three, four, five. So what we did is we just ordered this in an ascending order. We started at the lowest number we had and we went to the next number of work capacity. But what you'll notice is that caused us to jump weights a lot. So we went here, then we went here, then we went over to here. And what you'll notice is this becomes a heavy light rolling wave. We became light, medium, light, heavy, medium, light, heavy. And it's gonna go back and forth and it's become a heavy light cycle that writes itself. But think about that, we're just ascending up the ladder over and over and over again. And then we're setting a goal of work capacity down here at the bottom. Our path is being chosen for us by the math. This doesn't always work out. You could build in back off days as well. But let's not talk about that for now. Let's just think about this. Double clean and press, double front squat are kind of our most possible Conan movements that we have. This would be a pure bodybuilding program and we would set it up like this when we think about timing for this because we're trying to do a lot i'm starting us here and you could put this as an e every two minutes on the two minutes or every three minutes on the three minutes what that means is you would set a timer for three minutes and you would set it up to repeat for that number of rounds or that number of rounds or that number of rounds you could still predict exactly how long the workout took. So if you were using two minutes, then five sets of two minutes would take 10 minutes, 10 sets of two minutes would take 20 minutes. But if you're trying to push heavier weight this way, set it at three minutes, because you're probably gonna get done with the movement itself, the exercise in about 30 seconds, as this is set up right now, which means you'll have two minutes and 30 seconds to stand around, which is a nice long break, which will allow you to recover, which will then allow you to lift the heavier weights. This is getting away from strength endurance and getting more towards pure strength. We're treating this like barbell, but getting around the fact that we can't microload 
the weight. They are volume cycles that are moving, but the path between the volume cycle is being determined by the work capacity of each day. Right now, we have it set up as a linear progression. If this were to go on longer than 20 workouts, because this is 10 weeks right here at twice a week, which is pretty hard. If it goes on longer than that, then we would have to start building in step downs. But Let's talk about that some other time. This has been Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica. We will come back and we will talk about the math for this with the bigger jumps, with the 8K jumps from the traditional Strong First RKC 16K to 24K to 32K, the way that kettlebelling was first introduced to me. This is the easier way. More weights makes your life a lot easier.